Welcome back aboard Rikers Iron. This is a Rikers Iron review. Today I'm going to be uh, unboxing and reviewing um, my early Christmas present from Santa, who magically showed up last week. Uh, it's going to be the um, Una the Sky Hunter uh, miniature from Privateer Press. Uh, it's the limited edition box. I haven't opened it yet. I'm not really sure what's inside. Um, the box itself looks pretty good, but uh, we'll go over that stuff later. I'm also going to be reviewing the uh, the new Victor uh, Conquest Colossal Combo Kit um, Mega Box here. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty big. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Um, I'm going to be looking at uh, a series of categories um, regarding these uh, miniatures. Um, I'm very picky when miniatures come out, uh, especially metal ones and plastic ones. They have a tendency to very drastically in terms of quality and detail and mold lines and the feeling and the texture and the brittleness of the actual um, miniature itself. So uh, some of the things I'm going to be looking at is contents of the box itself. What comes in the box? Is there more than expected? Uh, is there m missing parts? Um, what else is going to be covered? We're going to cover the, uh, the, the detail on the miniature. Um, it, it, like I mentioned before, it varies and ranges based on the miniature. Uh, we're also going to be covering the the production itself. Are there a ton of mold lines? Are there a lot of problems with any of the parts itself? As, uh, again, is there any missing parts? Um, we're also going to be uh, reviewing any sort of surprises inside the box um, and any other content that's in there. And also the price versus value. Uh, that's going to be a pretty much a staple in all of our in all of our reviews. Uh, we're also going to be um, reviewing the packaging itself because sometimes it comes in very nice packaging like this. Like I'm very excited about <laughs> this box, uh, just like the wormwood came uh, from a previous review came in a nice box as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to bring the camera in. We're going to start unboxing. We're going to go over all this stuff, and uh, I'll try to show you as much as possible some of the good things, the bad things, and uh, the ugly things in between. So uh, thanks a lot, everybody. I hope you enjoy, and uh, like, subscribe, do all the usual jazz, and uh, share us around if you can, if you don't want to like or subscribe. <laughs> uh, and thanks again for watching Riker's Iron. So we're going to be starting off with Una the Sky Hunter limited edition uh, model. Um, the three categories we're going to be reviewing, uh, this and all other future minis, um, will be packaging, contents of the box, the quality of the contents, and if there's any uh, surprises or anything, because sometimes they put things inside that are little rewards or little just info things and that kind of stuff. So let's kick this off. So first thing, packaging. Uh, I actually normally like to open up the box that it was shipped in, but it was uh, I was going somewhere after when I first got this uh, package. So um, I only really have right now the uh, initial box, uh, that like the packaging box, so not the actual shipping box. The shipping box was fine. There was no holes. There was no crushing. Uh, Privateer Press uh, wrapped it pretty good. Um, this box looks amazing. There's a lot of details. There's a lot of cool little, uh, like, Una's face. We got the little Hordes logo. It's a very nice box. I'll probably be using it for storage. Or something it's got the nice little logo here feels good uh, so yeah packaging is awesome uh, uh, everything's perfect so I'm gonna try and open it which is a little tougher than I expected so I have my light here to try and illuminate some of the stuff so there it is there's the mini in its package it's got a cool little uh, border holder let's take this out so the contents of the box, I'm going to be reviewing that. Contents of its the box so far. Oh wow, it comes with a little nice little surprise here. A little pin. A little circle of Oberos pin. We got the mini itself. She seems to be uh, all in one piece here. Let's take a look at the contents. We got a foil, which I didn't realize it would be. We got a foil version of the card. We got a crinkled, squished corner 
I'm not too pleased about that. I like my stuff to be very pristine, especially if it's a limited edition. <laughs> Negative marks for that one. Uh, everything looks pretty good. Uh, I'm really pleased about the foil. The foil stuff's a nice surprise. I didn't realize it was going to be that. Uh, let's open up this, take everything out, see if all of the pieces are in here. So it looks like all the pieces are here. We got our two pieces of cape. We got, uh, I think that's everything in there. It's a pretty nice little collector's edition. Um, so the actual detail of the model itself, uh, it looks pretty clean. There seem to be a lot of difficult mold lines to remove. There's that annoying one that they always have along the shaft. Uh, Nothing's really too hard to make out, at least on the primary model. The the end bits, I guess, are supposed to be feathers. These things here, they look like feathers or maybe a stone. That's a little hard to read, but overall it looks pretty good. Uh, let's look at the pieces of the cape. I examine all the pieces because sometimes they have, like, holes in them or... I mean, not the metal ones. The metal ones are not... As bad they they're usually pretty solid and clean but when you get plastic in a in a kit often the plastic has a lot of problems with it I love the details on the feathers the feathers are gonna be fun to paint so uh, the model itself is pretty nice comes with everything uh, the card was a little bent in the corner which I wasn't too pleased like how hard is it to put in a package safely like um, the foil was a nice surprise so is the, uh, the little circle of Oros pin. I'm looking forward to displaying that. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Price-wise, I, I paid about $40 Canadian after shipping and everything like that. So um, is it worth $40 Canadian? I would say yes, assuming that the, the her regular model wasn't coming out, uh, which I think is scheduled for February. I saw in one of the release things. It is February, March time. Had I not known that, I probably would have held off. But with that said, I'm, I'm definitely pleased with the model. It's way more detailed than uh, I had initially uh, thought it was going to be, um, which I'm very pleased about. In comparison to the first model, which I have somewhere, I cannot remember where now, uh, she... I can't really say which one I actually like more, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Una 1 had, was one of my favorite models, if not my favorite model in uh, Circle. This one was actually pretty good. I'm quite pleased with this. I'm looking forward to displaying this and painting it up. Worthwhile, yes. Uh, everything in the box was there. Everything seemed to be very detailed. Everything is clean, minus the card, which I'm not too pleased about, so... Would I recommend this? Yes, I would. If you can find it, I would definitely recommend it. However, with its new model coming out, the uh, the Uno standard blister pack, I think it's going to be like 13 or 14 bucks. So in comparison, I would say just hold off and wait. Don't bother unless you're really gung-ho on getting a foil card and uh, the, um, the little pin. Uh, actually, two days ago, they just released the errata, so the cards are kind of pointless now, um, unless you still play with the cards. I know I do, so I'm quite pleased that it's a foil card. It looks looks really awesome. The art's amazing on it. And, uh, yeah, so Una the, Una the Sky Hunter, very, very cool model. The, everything was perfect, and uh, would definitely, um, if you're a collector or just a specific, you know, fancy model painter, I would definitely seek it out. Otherwise, if you're just a player, just wait for the model, the uh, standard model. So we're continuing our two-parter unboxer with the Kador Conquest Victor Colossal Warjack Plastic Miniatures Kit. Um, so as normal, we're going to go through our, uh, our categories for review. We're going to go through the packaging, the contents, the quality of the mini, so, uh, in addition to any surprises and the final cost. Um, so let's kick it off. The uh, box itself is pretty massive, as you can see here. 
um, I have a little Grigorovich uh, for a comparison. Um, the box is, is pretty deep. I mean, I think it's bigger than my other Colossal kits. I, I could be wrong, though. Um, the weight is actually kind of nice. There's a lot of parts in here to create either the Conquest or Victor, and it's not that not, not that heavy. Um, when it got shipped, everything was fine. There was no there's no problems with it. Uh, so let's uh, let's pop the plastic, see what's inside, see the actual contents, see if it holds up. So inside, I'm expecting. Uh, a better plastic kit along the side of the Grolar. The Grolar was very nice. It had solid, smooth everything. The mold lines were minimal. The uh, There was very little to repair on it, and it was solid, hard plastic. So I'm hoping that this is similar. Oh, wow, it's a little... Uh, it's a raised lid. The other boxes have all been, like, slide-open pop lids. Okay. So here's a lot of... Uh, Wow, this is going to be, this feels very daunting. <laughs> I haven't built a kit this big and this detailed in a long time. Not since the 40k days. Let's go just to this other side, actually. So we have one bag of, looks like legs and arms. Some feet and armor plating. The final body, I guess, with the shoulders and weapons. Let's stack this over here. We've got the, the usual base, and we have an instruction booklet for either or assembly. Although I don't expect it to be too complicated, given that they're pretty much the same model except for the back end, the top part, if you can see at the top here. Um, it's just slightly different. Uh, Yeah. Wow, this looks <laughs> this looks intense. I'm very excited to build it. So content itself is oh, I forgot about the cards. I was wondering. I was very worried there wasn't gonna be cards in here. And that I would need war room. I do not have a phone that supports it, so or a device that supports it. So conquest, Victor, I'm not gonna show you those in case uh I get flagged or something. But uh both cards are in here. They're this one looks a little off color, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, get that off to the side. So contents, everything looks good. Nothing seems to be missing. I don't think, anyways. All the weapons look here to be here. All the arms and legs. So the quality of mini. It's the same plastic. If you have the Grolar kit, it's the same hard plastic as that. There's no. I don't see any mold lines on some of the more annoying things to to do, like the shafts of stuff. Like I always, they always have this weird line of shaft that you have to file down or cut away, and it makes your models look a little a little weird. They still have it on some parts, but that's the that's really just uh, it's just on the. Uh, on the poles, I don't see anything on the rivets or any of the other details. The weapons, the the back um, smokestacks. Wow, really impressed. I'm very, very impressed. And it's entirely plastic. I was expecting a little bit of metal in here. Privateer Press definitely went all out, and I really hope that they uh, continue this with all their other kits and all the future kits and any other reprints of kits that they that they bring. So in terms of value, I actually got lucky on Amazon. I went on on a whim on Black Friday and ended up finding this bad boy for 95 bucks Canadian. I'm not sure what that is in US. Backwards, probably like 65, 70 bucks. Um, and I also got free shipping because I shipped it to a buddy's house in the States. Um, even at full price, the full price of this, it's friggin' amazing. I would pay full price for this in a heartbeat, and I look forward to purchasing other um, Colossal kits and Battle Engine kits in the future, if they're anything like this. Like, this looks... I'm really excited to start building this. Um, 
So overall, would I recommend this uh, as a player? I would recommend this. The Victor, the Cl uh, or uh, or Conquest, they're both awesome miniatures to drop down on the table. They're both super effective. Um, as a painter, as a collector, as a modeler, I would highly recommend this. This is an amazing kit. It looks, it's, it's perfect. I, I I can't ask for a better kit. I don't think that there is a better kit right now on the Privateer Press line uh, on, on the market. Um, trying to find some flaws in here to point out. The only thing, like I said, I can mention is the shafts have the usual uh, little line around down the side, but nothing nothing too extensive. So if, you, if you're a Kator player or even if you're just a painter, I would pick this up in, in a heartbeat. And uh, yeah, highly recommend it amazing job privateer press i'm definitely definitely impressed by it so i uh i hope you enjoyed this uh, double review um i'm going to actually bring you in for a closer look I'll, I'll, there'll be another little short snippet we'll come in close and i'll give you a little bit more details of the of the contents actually open so as promised here's a little uh, closer look uh, at the model kit itself and the details on it it looks as i said in, in the review it looks perfect There might be a lot of uh, little nubs to clean up, like after you've snipped them from the, from the sprue. But if you put in a little bit extra time, it'll be amazing. And it looks like everything fits together very snug. Great job, Privateer.